Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, Pablo swears he's faithful. You said I had an affair a year ago, and that's it. You have had one. Yes. But. We did some digging. You want the truth. I want the truth. Amanda, come on out. Is this number two? Yes, it is. He has some explaining to do. You knew you were lying to me when you came out here and sat down. Who is Bernice? I wonder how many more chairs you could fit over there. How many more chairs do we need? Bernice, come on out. I didn't want to do this show in the first place. She told me to do it. So this is her fault? Pretty much. With a surprise twist. Who is Alina? That will leave you speechless. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. Take I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. here at 27-year-old Pablo's profile that he posted on a popular dating site. He's six foot one inches tall, seemed like a handsome guy. He lists his profession as weapons and tactics. Sounds exciting, right? <laughs> his intent is listed as wanting a relationship. And, hold on ladies, he's single. As he says right there, marital status single. Any takers? I mean, interesting, right? Intriguing? Well, there's only one problem. Pablo is already taken by this woman. Yeah, you're saying correctly, that is his wife of three years, Anna. Now, she claims Pablo is a cheater who is unapologetic for his behavior. Take a look. Pablo and I have been married for three years. We started dating almost instantly after we met each other. Pablo was the first guy I had ever had sex with. When I was at the beach, it was a great ceremony. That was a happy time for me. He was deployed overseas. When he returned from Iraq, that's when the problem started. He became distant. I finally found out that Pablo was cheating on me when one day he got into some trouble and I had to pick him up. When I arrived to help Pablo, they told me that his girlfriend has already arrived to help him. I saw the girl. When I told her who I was, she drove away. When I got home, I confronted Pablo. He admitted to having an affair. He admitted that they had sex twice a week. I felt broken. I felt stepped on. I felt betrayed. He told me after the affair that he will end the relationship with that woman and will start working on our marriage. It was hard to believe, but I was willing to give it a shot because I wanted to save a marriage. I've been trying to learn how to trust him again. Well, Pablo says she should trust him because he's only been unfaithful one time over a year ago and then his wife needs to stop being so suspicious and just trust him again. When I first met Anna, I thought she was the most beautiful thing that I ever saw. And we hit it off. I went to work to Iraq. During the first year that I was overseas, Anna was great. Uh, she sent care packages, letters. After the first year, it stopped cold. And I felt abandoned by her. For the last year, Anna and I have been able to live in the same household together as a married couple. I was having some real family issues, and I needed the support and comfort of Anna. And she chose not to be there with me. Instead, she was out partying. I needed attention from somebody else, and I met this other woman, and I started a relationship with her. We just meet up maybe once or twice a week, and we just have fun together. We did have sex. My wife finally found out about this woman and confronted me. It's been over a year since I admitted to being unfaithful to Anna, yet she still continues saying that I'm cheating on her and being unfaithful to her, which I'm not, and I'm getting tired of it. Anna has invaded my privacy by unlocking my phone, figuring out the phone password on my phone, going through my text messages, going through my contacts, actually calling and texting someone in my contacts. I don't have any privacy in this marriage and in my life right now. I only had one occasion that I was unfaithful to her, 
and she should be able to move on. And trust me. Are you prepared to be honest today? Yes. I, I want you to be honest. Put it all on the table. We got because otherwise you're just wasting your time and mine. Now here are the issues according to Pablo. He says Anna was not supportive during his time in Iraq, and by that you mean at first she was. She was sending kind of care packages, your some comfort items, favorite things, texting, being in contact with you. But then that just kind of fell off, right? Yes, it did. Okay. He says Anna had an affair while he was in the National Guard. He says Anna refused to go with him to his grandmother's funeral and that she is always suspicious and accusing of him being unfaithful. Those are your issues. Yes. What do you say about all that? Well, half of it is not true. Did you have an affair? No, never. You didn't have an affair? No. Did you sort of have an affair? No. Did you kind of have an affair? No. no Were way. you being flirty and engaging with other men? No, never. Well, he says you did. Because he thinks that way. Uh huh. Did you stop being supportive when he was overseas? Did you stop sending him packages and texting and staying in contact with him? Perhaps I slowed down a bit because of too many things going on. In the U.S., I was taking care of things, of bills, and perhaps I got a little bit take carried away with the everyday life. So you might let up a little bit. Yes. Okay. And you are suspicious. You are accusatory. Yes. Okay. Well, so what are the marital issues according to Anna? She says Pablo cheated. He has no real job. He says he's a personal trainer. And he says he's going to college, but these are all questions because you just don't know anything about it, right? You just have no details about it, right? Correct, yes. Is, is that true? Do you have a job? Yes, I do. Are you a trainer? Yes. Personal trainer? Yes. Yeah. Uh, why does she think you don't? I mean, being a personal trainer, there's no set hours. And I do go to college. I do go to school. Yeah. How many hours are you taking? Uh, full time. Full time? How many hours is that? Twelve. Twelve hours? What are you studying? Well, I was studying criminal justice and I was trying to take psychology. Uh huh. Psychology? Yeah. yeah. So, you do admit that over a year ago you were unfaithful. You cheated. Yes, I do admit that. Why did you do it? Who, what was the story? I did it because I just stopped. I stopped feeling love for Anna. I stopped having emotions for her. So, you, you don't love her? Uh, well, for a period of time, I didn't. Now, my love is trying to get back there to her. Uh-huh. Are you focused on her? Yes. You, so, you're, you're dealing with her at this point? Yes. To the exclusion of all others? Because yes. I always say you can't fix your marriage by turning away from each other. So, you've turned towards her and you're focused on her? Yes. Yeah. So, you, you're in. You, you want to try to make this work? I do try to make it work, yes, because I have hope. I have hope for us. Are you telling her the truth? You said, I had an affair a year ago, and that's it. Yes. Okay, because Pablo says that he only had one affair during his marriage to Anna. But you know what I always say, for every rat you see, there are 50 you don't. (laughs) So what is the truth? I have some serious questions for these two when we come back. Have you lied to me since you've been out here? About what? About whether or not you've had more than one affair. What is the stipulation about just not doing the show anymore? And later, who is Bernice? Is she in the show too? Wonder how many more chairs you can fit over there. How many more chairs do we need? <laughs> Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. My daughter said my husband molested her when she was younger. I have never raped my daughter. You know what you did to me. You said you wanted to be here to confront him. I just want the truth to come out. And start telling the truth. You said at 16, he approached you. Chris had gotten me high. And he said, well, I think it's time that you knew what making love was. Bull. Did you get her high? Yeah, I did. Do you have a problem with lying? I did when I was younger, yes. 
Chris is facing years in prison. You just not even care. I care about my family. Then why are you doing this to your family? Because I want justice. That's tomorrow. It's been over a year since I admit to being unfaithful to Anna, yet she continues saying that I'm cheating on her. I only had one occasion that I was unfaithful to her. I have never cheated on Pablo. He thinks I'm doing the same thing that he's doing to me. Pablo is probably accusing me of cheating because he's the cheater. I'm not cheating. That's in the past. There's nothing going on anymore. Well, Pablo claims that she just needs to back off because he has cheated once. He says he's sorry about that. And it's because he says Anna cheated on him while he was in Iraq. He said he found pictures and text messages between her and another man. Now, Anna denies cheating and says Pablo's the cheater. So do you have pictures and text messages? Because we asked you for them and you, you didn't have them. I was trying to get her a new phone. So I needed her old phone for her to transfer the data. Uh -huh. And then that's where I saw that the, she was sending pictures and texting guys while I was away in training. Is that true? I honestly cannot remember sending pictures to anyone. Well, you say you don't recall. Look, come I on. I, I, I said at the beginning, right. if you want to have a chance to fix things, we got to be honest and put it on the table. So I'm, I'm asking you straight up, did you cheat on him while he was in prep to go to Iraq or did you not? No, I didn't. Were you sending text messages and pictures to somebody? I don't recall. I mean, you're not on, in a deposition here. I'm just, right. I'm just asking. You either did or you didn't. You either sent pictures to some guys or you didn't. I, I believe I didn't. I don't remember. It was so long ago. Did you have an affair with somebody? No. Okay, and you have had one. Yes. Okay, well, in fact, we did some digging of our own, and we did find some evidence. Our evidence has a name, and the name is Amanda. Take a look. Pablo and I met in college. We started flirting and kissing. Pablo told me that he and his wife were separated, and I believed him. I was married at the time. At first, when Pablo kissed me, I pushed him away and I said, whoa, I'm married, Pablo. We can't be doing this. Later, Pablo and I started flirting again, and eventually, we had sex. I do feel as if Pablo took advantage of me. A week or so after Pablo and I had had sex, I got in this text and a voicemail from this woman saying that she was Pablo's wife and that she wanted me to stop speaking. I decided to look through his phone. And I learned there was a number he'd been texting how much he loves her, misses her. She admitted that they had sex. I was dumbfounded. I was astonished beyond all belief. Pablo probably is a habitual liar. Anna and I have gotten together to try to bring these lies out into the light so that they don't happen again. You said you had one affair a year ago when you talked to her about it. She knows about that one. Okay. Is this number two? Yes, it is. Anna found out about it, and we talked it that we were not going to say anything, but she told me that she told me a lie. When we talked about either there will be anything else, any surprises in the show, I didn't confront him. You don't produce this show. I, I do. Look, you... you... Do you, want, do you want help or do you want to come in here and tell me a pack of lies and then go home and be the same place you were? I didn't want to do the show in the first place. Then why are you here? Because she told me to do it. Have you lied to me since you've been out here? About what? About whether or not you've had more than one affair. Well, just that, well, since it came into light, yes. I mean, with the mandate. Why? I, I said, are you willing to be honest? You said yes. You get it all on the table so it can be dealt with in a mature fashion. I understand that, Dr. Phil, and she never told me that she was going to write to you or anybody else, and, you know, I didn't want a national TV about my marriage, about my life, what's happening. You're here. Because she told me to do it. 
So this is her fault. Pretty much. It's not your fault for cheating. It's her fault for not describing to you. Let me tell you, we, we dig. We ask you a million questions, right? We gave you ever opportunity to be forthcoming. We gave you ever opportunity to be forthcoming. And I do my homework, and I make no apology for that because I can't help people if I don't know what's wrong. And, and, and that's fine. And, and that's a cheap shot. You, know, you said, oh, I, I'm a victim here. I'm a victim well, I'm here. What the, the hell do you mean you're a victim I'm here? I'm not playing victim. I just, I just didn't know that you know, this was going to happen. Like, so what? You knew you were lying to me when you came out here and sat down. I said, do not waste your time or mine. Tell me the truth. Okay. So are you telling the truth? Yes, I am. So there's, a, there's the one she knows about plus Amanda. Yeah. Is there anything else? <clears throat> what is the stipulation about just not doing the show anymore? Can I just stop and walk? Uh, you can do whatever you want to do, but what you don't want to do is say you want help and then lie about it. I want to fix us, but I feel like this is the only, the only chance I have, the last chance I have, the last chance we have to fix. And I don't feel comfortable when you guys like, ooh, ooh him, because... My heart breaks down when, when you guys do that to him. It breaks down because I care about you. I love you. I still love you. Yes, it hurts when you do it to me, but I still love you, and I still, I still have hope for us. This tiny bitty hope that's still there. I want things to work. I want you to figure out how to crawl out of this hole. I want to be out of this hole that we're sitting in in our marriage. That's interesting. Pablo not only has a current dating site, but he really has been pretty active on it while here in L.A. We'll talk more about that when we come back. I do have a dating profile. Your dating profile says you're single. Is this just a show about me lying? Well, that's certainly part of it, wouldn't you think? <clears throat> Amanda's here. If you want to talk to her, she's here. She can tell you what he said about you. Do you want to know? Absolutely. Well, Amanda, come on out. This May on Dr. Phil. I didn't hear this. You don't know your information. I've been trying to It's a month of dramatic interventions. My mother is more attached to her junk than her kids. I don't believe I'm a hoarder. Oh, my God. These are things that you've saved. You just never know when you might need a wheel. Plus, Dr. Bill exclusives all month long. House of Horror survivor Michelle Knight returns. She will appear here in front of a live studio audience. You won't believe where she's living now. An exclusive look. Stories ripped from the headlines. No arrests have been made for the deaths of two children. Cody and Julia killed those children. We're innocent. But you have explanations for the deaths. They both had an adverse reaction to their vaccinations. The evidence examined. You have blunt force trauma. Now, are you convinced that it wasn't a reaction? the vaccination no you can't tell me that my child was abused this may on dr phil well, all you got to do is tell the truth and then and then there is no surprise there is no embarrassment okay so what's the truth I love you, I care about you, but just, this marriage is not the same anymore. That's it, has, it hasn't been the same. So what happened the past three days that we had great time together? I even told you on great Saturday time that with I your family. I, I felt like show. I'm married again. What happened to this? What I told happened you on Saturday to you telling me how much you love me a few days ago? He says he told you three days ago he wanted out. Yes, but then two days, how much he loves me. What happened to it? There was a situation on Saturday that just, I was just going to take a plane, take it home and not do the show because, I mean, it just made me realize that, that I don't.
belong in this marriage that I don't need this marriage. If that's true, then why lie? I mean, if, if, if you're on your way out, if it's over, why not at least tell her the truth? I mean, why, if, if you're going to leave her, why not at least tell her the truth? I tried to several occasions, but she, I told her that I wanted a divorce, that I want out, and she told me no. But that's did, not the truth. Did you tell Amanda you were single? <clears throat> I did. She said in the tape that you lied to her and said you were single. No, I told her that I was uh, with someone at the time. Did you tell you were married? No. So you kind of waffled it. Yes, I did. Because your dating profile says you're single. Okay. But you're not, so that's a lie. Yes, it is. And it's interesting that you're offended by her lying to you, but... The stack of lies that you seem to be accumulating might dwarf hers. So is, is this just a show about me lying? <laughs> well, that's certainly part of it, wouldn't you think? <laughs> okay. I mean, if you're in a relationship and you're lying to your partner, and I'm here to help you with this relationship, would that be a relevant topic? Well, yeah, that, I mean, okay, uh, I do have a dating profile. Are you active on that dating profile? Just talking. Just talking? Mm -hmm. To other women? Yes. You, you've talked to seven of them since you got to L.A.? <laughs> yes. So you want to know that, true? Uh, yes. Well, I would know. I would want to know why. Why? Who are you looking for? The perfect one. Who are you looking for? You were the perfect one. So what happened? You stopped. I stopped to be perfect. When? A long time ago. When? When did I stop to be perfect enough for you? Good enough for you. Back in Iraq. When I stopped sending you enough packages like the other year. That's what changed when I my perfection. You the most. I see. D did you talk to Amanda about her? <clears throat> I did. So you talked to another woman about your wife? Yeah. Amanda's here. If you want to talk to her, she's here. She can tell you what he said about you. Do yes. you want to know? Absolutely. Well, Amanda, come on out. Wow. Amanda, how are you? Good. How are you, Dr. Phil? Okay. Now, to be clear, you didn't know he was married to her at the time? To be honest, he said that he had been separated. He was still currently married, but that he'd been separated for a year. For a year? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Is that true? No, we've never been separated. You've kind of given an explanation of why you lied to her, but why lie to her? wonder how many more chairs you can fit over there. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I'm sarcastic, by the way, Dr. Fell, so. Yeah, how many more chairs do we need? <laughs> uh, not enough. I'm just playing. Um, I don't know. Well, I mean, why did you lie to her? I mean, you, you said she abandoned you when you were in Iraq, and she was not the person that you married and all, but then you, you meet this woman who's new and hasn't yet betrayed you or offended you or failed you in any way, but you lied to her too. Why lie to her? I don't know. Why did you want her ring? I don't know. Bet. I'm gonna go now. But who is Bernice? Did she have something to do with the ring? I pretend like I proposed to her. Okay, Bernice, come on out.
<laughs> Y'all split up for a week? You, you took a week break? Yes. And you said you wanted her ring and you wanted her to have your ring. Mm -hmm. Why it did was... you take the week break? Oh, that was last year. Pablo brought it up and he offered us to live apart for a week separately to connect with God, to actually find ourselves, figure out what we want to do with the marriage. Did you do that? Yes. Did you think about it? No, I didn't. What'd you do? Went on a cruise. By yourself? No. With another woman? Yes. Not this one? No. You went on this cruise with her while she was praying and reflecting on the marriage. Mm -hmm. Breaks my heart. It proves me again that I'm the only person battling for marriage, fighting for marriage, trying to work for it. Just I was hoping to change. I was hoping for me to change, for us to change. For us to change. Yeah, for mainly for me. I was pretty flexible to change. I wanted to change. Okay. You never gave me opportunity but you, to. But you were on a cruise with another woman. That's not reflective of change, right? No. And why did, why did you want her ring? I don't know, but I'm going to go now, so. Who is Bernice? Is she on the show, too? Part? Is she on the show, too? Who is Bernice? It's another woman that I'm seeing. It's another woman you're seeing. Yeah. But Did she have something to do with the ring? One time as a, not really as a joke, I was like, hey, I got this ring. That's it. Is that the truth? Well, I pretended around like I proposed to her or not, but I didn't, I didn't propose to her. She kind of thought you did. You want the truth. I want the truth. Well, here's what Bernice had to say. I met Pablo on a dating website six months ago. He started messaging me. He was very aggressive. The first day, he was like, hey, let's meet up. His profile said he was single and looking for a relationship. He came off as a big flirt. He's very friendly and outgoing. He started getting serious three months ago. Me and Pablo were intimate maybe once a week. I was starting to fall in love with him. One night, two months ago, Pablo took me out to dinner and He's like, I bought you something, and it was a ring. And I was honestly shocked. I did not say yes to his uh, proposal. I said no, and he was upset about it, and he made a big deal about it. Come on down. Okay, Bernice, come on out. <laughs> Hi, Bernice. Hey, how are you? Did he ask you to marry him? He sure did. Was he serious? Yes, very dead serious. And he asked you to marry him with her ring? Yes. Uh, she's so embarrassed by this, she doesn't want her face shown, right? Yeah, more towards my family. It's not embarrassment for me. But, yeah, I mean, it's a big thing with my family. And he met my family. Who is Alina? Oh. <laughs> Too good to be true, yeah. What did he text you a half hour before you got on the plane? About how much he loves me, wants to marry me, wants to have kids with me. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Did her dad molest her? I have never touched my daughter. You know what you did to me. One of them is lying. You wanted to be here to confront him. Because I want justice. That's tomorrow. Who's Alina? Oh. <laughs> Too good to be true, yeah. Huh? There's another woman that I started talking. I never met her, though. Yeah. Oh, actually, you have. <laughs> because these two actually got together, Bernice and Anna. 
And they were Alina? And they collectively decided to become Alina. And they've been talking to you. <laughs> they've been talking to you on the dating website and going back and forth. Why, why do this show, though, if you know all about this? Why? I've seen more than you think I've seen. But I don't know if you actually see yourself of what you're doing. Okay, so why, why? Why, why bring me out here if you know about her and her, why? Because I still care. I care about you. No matter how much you hurt me, I care about you as a human. So let me human. ask you a question, even after all this and after what you just found out, you still want to work this marriage? I don't know. You don't know. It's not, it's not about humiliating you here and put everything on a platter to show you, you know, that, oh, and I that's know. That's exactly what you're doing. It's about you, it's about to, you to see what you've been doing to other women with their lives, what you've been doing to me. And I feel like it's the last chance for you to actually change. Why do you need to lie to every woman you encounter and interact with? Don't you think that's odd? No, yeah, it is. And her hope was that when you came out here and I said, let's put it all on the table, that you would just man up and say, you know what? I have checked out of this. I have been involved with other women. I'll give you a list if you want it. I don't care. We got to either be honest or shut this thing down. That's what she's telling us. She wanted the hope. It's just why I started this dialogue with saying, will you be honest with me while you're here? Okay. To which you said yes and then began to lie. We're done. You obviously are done too. I mean, you're not going to be able to go back to what we're back home and try to fix our marriage. We're not. So... Just let it be. And I'm sorry. Sorry to you, but mostly sorry to you. What did he text you a half hour before you got on the plane? About how much he loves me. He wants to marry me. He wants to have kids with me. So it's a lot. The thing you should be thinking about is not just that you've lied to this woman, but that you lied to that one and that one. And I bet you lied to the one on the cruise. Yeah, I did. I lied to all of them. What do you tell them? A monster? A psycho? Crazy? That I ruined your life? You pretty much did. I did by what not giving you enough attention because I've been. You carried. made me. You made me quit my job, the job that I loved, the job that I always wanted. You're not a kid that parents make you. This is a couple here. I can make you do things if you're not willing to. We're done. So why continue on with the show? Why continue on with this? Why? So you could see yourself. And get sick of yourself, okay. of what you do. All right. Dr. Phil? <laughs> Question? Now what? Where's the show going from here? What if this is the wake-up call that stops you from destroying every relationship you get in before you even get halfway into it? <clears throat> what if this was that wake-up call where you came and said, you know, wow, talking to these three beautiful women here that I've lied to every one of them, I've hurt every one of them, I recognize that I gotta, I gotta, I gotta clean up my act here. What if this was a wake-up call and you are better than what you've been? Of course, uh, I, of course that I'm better and I'm sorry that this ever happened and I've never wanted this. I still, I believed in marriage and the whole matrimony and the whole commitment. Well, you know what, I, I'm gonna add one more chair. No, he's gonna like this one. I brought in the man that Time Magazine once named America's Best Preacher. Can he be on my side? To see if he can <laughs> give this couple some spiritual advice as they move forward, whether it's together or apart. And I'm talking about my very good friend, the Bishop T.D. Jakes. He's going to join us now. You lie to me. You must hate me so much right now. I don't hate you at all. I, I got all of that out of my system with that one. How can you be so amazing? You could be friends with your husband's mistress. Yeah, it's like a dream come true. Ignore her. She's just working through some stuff right now. She's 
it's you got trouble. But you smell amazing. What is that? Uh, I think it's just sweat. And that's the plot of the Fox movie, The Other Woman, starring Cameron Diaz, Leslie Mann, and Kate Upton. It is currently in movie theaters nationwide, and it's all about a wife and her husband's mistresses scheming against him. Well, we have a real-life case today. After some sleuthing and investigating, Anna admits to not only tracking down her husband Pablo's lovers, but also befriending them. And I made a fake profile on the dating website so we could catch Pablo with other women. We used the fake photograph so Pablo wouldn't get suspicious of me or Anna. Pablo started messaging us actually the next day on the fake profile. We were able to see all the messages from all the girls that he's been talking to. He's gotten at least 20 phone numbers. Pablo is a cheater and a liar, and he manipulates everybody, especially women. Now, I'm sure my next guest will have lots to say about this story. Bishop Jakes is not only senior pastor of his church, The Potter's House in Dallas, but he is the producer of several films, including uh, Winnie Mandela, starring Jennifer Hudson, and his newest film, Heaven is for Real, starring Greg Kinnear. He is also the author of a new book, Instinct, The Power to Unleash Your Inborn Drive, and it's available everywhere right now. Please welcome my good friend, the Bishop T.D. Jakes. I'd like you to meet these folks. Well, this is Pablo, this is Anna, Amanda, and Bernice. And, you know, Bishop, you and I have talked about this situation. What's your take on this, just generally speaking? And then I have some very specific questions for you. Well, you know, I think in order to make a marriage work, you have to have the same core values. One of the things that I often use a metaphor that the giraffe and the turtle can occupy the same space, but they don't have the same worldview. And it seems like you've got two different worldviews going on, even though you're in the same space. And, and the thing to me, Anna, that, that as a person, you have to be empowered to understand that in your core, you, you already knew this. The whole thing about instincts is that deep down inside, you sense truth on the inside. And when you sense that something is wrong and the information validates it, then you have to value yourself enough to take a real clear look at this. And, and, and Pablo, with you, you have a huge opportunity. I'm, I feel for you. I'm, I am on your side. I'm, I'm, I'm on your I'm side. You're the only one. Yeah, no, I knew you needed some help. I came out here to back you up. <laughs> here, here's the deal, though. You have to really, this is really rough, but you have to really strip down and stop blaming everybody because you can't confront. <laughs> What's, what's really going on with you? At the end of the day, whether your relationships work out with these women or not, the real problem is your relationship with yourself. Pablo has issues with his wife. And you know what? The issues are legitimate. Mm -hmm. Your issues are legitimate. She has failed to do some things that she needs to do in a reasonable way. You have legitimate complaints about her your way of reacting to them is illegitimate. This isn't like, here's Miss Perfect Goody Two-Shoes Wife and Monster Husband. That's not the deal. But your reaction to it, I'm telling you, you never fix problems in a marriage by turning outside the marriage. You took an illegitimate way to deal with very valid needs and concerns. Mm -hmm. you, I get that. You, you, you think, oh, this is all about this criticizing. You know, I get that, but that's what happens, you know, when, when you do something that agrees. So we have to take a, a break. Um, the book we're talking about uh, from right now, the things that T.D. Jakes is saying, is his new book, Instinct, The Power to Unleash Your Inborn Drive. I read this in one setting uh, and then realized that actually it's not a read, it's a manual. It's something that you really need to reflect on, reread sections, reread passages, um, you've outdone yourself this time, Bishop, and it couldn't be, um, it couldn't be a better fit for these guys right here. We'll talk more about this and, uh, Pablo and Anna when we come back.
I wonder who's this man I married. I need help to restore myself as a woman, to actually feel alive again. I don't know if I can trust men again. And I feel like I'm ripped apart. Ready to get real? Go to DrPhil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to DrPhil.com today. Well, we're here with Bishop T.D. Jakes. The book we're talking about is Instinct, The Power to Unleash Your Inborn Drive. Anna has just revealed to her husband, Pablo, that she knows about his extramarital uh, activities and affairs. You know, one of the things that y you say in here is that our instincts speak to us daily. Instinct advises, information informs, and together they provide direction, which is what this couple needs right now. Absolutely. Pablo, here's, here, here's my point. Uh, you're damaged. I mean, you, you wouldn't do what you are doing if you hadn't been hurt somewhere along the way. And I don't know whether you two are going to stay married or not. You, you say you don't want to, but you don't really know. You, you don't really know. Because until you heal yourself, you're not ever going to see her through a clear lens. And until he, until he does that, you, you guys don't have a shot. You don't have a chance. You, you've got to deal with yourselves first. Are you interested in working on you? Yes, I am. I mean... Because I, and I know getting professional help can be very expensive, but if I arrange that for you as, as a gift in, in your hometown where you had the opportunity to sit down with someone and focus on that, would you do it? Sure, I would. We're, we're out of time. I, I want to thank my guest today. I want to give a very special thanks to the Bishop T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes' latest book, Instinct, The Power to Unleash Your Inborn Drive, uh, is now available everywhere books are sold. I, I sat down and read this, and um, I always get so much from what you do. This really hit a spot at this time in life for uh, us as a country and us across America. That's why they call you a leader. Thank and uh, you. you did a great job on this. I've got one of these, and you're not getting mine, but I tell you what, we will have a copy for everyone in the audience. All right. All right. Guys, we'll see you next time. Today, on an all-new Dr. Phil, Pablo swears he's faithful. You said I had an affair a year ago, and that's it. You have had one. Yes. But. We did some digging. You want the truth. I want the truth. Amanda, come on out. Is this number two? Yes, it is. He has some explaining to do. You knew you were lying to me when you came out here and sat down. Who is Bernice? I wonder how many more chairs you could fit over there. How many more chairs do we need? Bernice, come on out. I didn't want to do the show in the first place. She told me to do it. So this is her fault? Pretty much. With a surprise twist. Who is Alina? That will leave you speechless. Let's do it. Out of the show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. Take it. I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. here at 27-year-old Pablo's profile that he posted on a popular dating site.
He's six foot one inches tall. Seems like a handsome guy. He lists his profession as weapons and tactics. Sounds exciting, right? <laughs> his intent is listed as wanting a relationship. And, hold on ladies, he's single. Because <laughs> he says right there, marital status single. Any takers? I mean, interesting, right? Intriguing? Well, there's only one problem. Pablo is already taken by this woman. Yeah, you're saying correctly, that is his wife of three years, Anna. Now, she claims Pablo is a cheater who is unapologetic for his behavior. Take a look. Pablo and I have been married for three years. We started dating almost instantly after we met each other. Pablo was the first guy I had ever had sex with. When I was at the beach, it was a great ceremony. That was a happy time for me. He was deployed overseas. When he returned from Iraq, that's when the problem started. He became distant. I finally found out that Pavla was cheating on me when one day he got into some trouble and I had to pick him up. When I arrived to help Pablo, they told me that his girlfriend has already arrived to help him. I saw the girl. When I told her who I was, she drove away. When I got home, I confronted Pablo. He admitted to having an affair. He admitted that they had sex twice a week. I felt broken. I felt stepped on. I felt betrayed. He told me after the affair that he will end the relationship with that woman and will start working on our marriage. It was hard to believe, but I was willing to give it a shot because I wanted to save a marriage. I've been trying to learn how to trust him again. Pablo says she should trust him because he's only been unfaithful one time over a year ago and then his wife needs to stop being so suspicious and just trust him again. When I first met Anna, I thought she was the most beautiful thing that I ever saw and we hit it off. I went to work to Iraq. During the first year that I was overseas, Anna was great. Uh, she sent care packages, letters. After the first year, it stopped cold and I felt abandoned by her. For the last year, Anna and I have been able to live in the same household together as a married couple. I was having some real family issues and I needed the support and comfort of Anna. And she chose not to be there with me, instead she was out partying. I needed attention from somebody else and I met this other woman and I started a relationship with her. We just meet up maybe once or twice a week and we just have fun together. We did have sex. My wife finally found out about this woman and confronted me. It's been over a year since I admitted to being unfaithful to Anna, yet she still continues saying that I'm cheating on her and being unfaithful to her, which I'm not, and I'm getting tired of it. Anna has invaded my privacy by unlocking my phone, figuring out the phone password on my phone, going through my text messages, going through my contacts, actually calling and texting someone in my contacts. I don't have any privacy in this marriage and in my life right now. I only had one occasion that I was unfaithful to her, and she should be able to move on. And trust me. Are you prepared to be honest today? Yes. I, I want you to be honest. Put it all on the table. We got Because otherwise, you're just wasting your time and mine. Now, here are the issues according to Pablo. He says, Anna was not supportive during his time in Iraq. And by that, you mean at first, she was. She was sending kind of care packages. You're some comfort items, favorite things, texting, being in contact with you, but then that just kind of fell off, right? Yes, it did. Okay. He says Anna had an affair while he was in the National Guard. He says Anna refused to go with him to his grandmother's funeral and that she is always suspicious and accusing of him being unfaithful. Those are your issues. Yes. What do you say about all that? Well, half of it is not true. Did you have an affair? No, never. You didn't have an affair? No. Did you sort of have an affair? No. Did you kind of have an affair? No. no Were affair. you being flirty and engaging with other men? No, never. Well, he says you did. Because he thinks that way. Uh-huh. Did you stop? being supportive when he was overseas? Did you stop sending him packages and texting and staying in contact with him? 
perhaps I slowed down a bit because of too many things going on in the U.S. I was taking care of things, of bills, and perhaps I got a little bit take, carried away with the everyday life. So you might let up a little bit. Yes. Okay. And you are suspicious. You are accusatory. Yes. Okay. Well, so what are the marital issues according to Anna? She says Pablo cheated. He has no real job. He says he's a personal trainer. And he says he's going to college. But these are all questions because you just don't know anything about it, right? You just have no details about it, right? Correct. Yes. Is, is that true? Do you have a job? Yes, I do. Are you a trainer? Yes. Personal trainer? Yes. Yeah. Uh, why does she think you don't? I mean, being a personal trainer, there's no set hours. And I do go to college. I do go to school. Yeah. How many hours are you taking? Uh, full time. Full time? How many hours is that? Twelve. Twelve hours? Mm -hmm. What are you studying? Well, I was studying criminal justice and I was trying to take psychology. Uh-huh. Psychology. Yeah. yeah. So... You do admit that over a year ago you were unfaithful, you cheated. Yes, I do admit that. Why did you do it? Who, what was the story? I did it because I just stopped. I stopped feeling love for Anna. I stopped having emotions for her. So you, you don't love her? Uh, well, for a period of time, I didn't. Now my love is trying to get back there to her. Uh -huh. Are you focused on her? Yes. You, so you're you're dealing with her at this point. Yes. To the exclusion of all others. Because yes. I always say you can't fix your marriage by turning away from each other. So you've turned towards her and you're focused on her. Yes. Yeah. So you, you're you in. You, you want to try to make this work. I do try to make it work, yes. Because okay. I have hope. I have hope for us. Are you telling her the truth? You said I had an affair a year ago and that's it. Yes. Okay, because Pablo says that he only had one affair during his marriage to Anna. But you know what I always say, for every rat you see, there are 50 you don't. <laughs> so what is the truth? I have some serious questions for these two when we come back. <clears throat> have you lied to me since you've been out here? About what? About whether or not you've had more than one affair. What is the stipulation about just not doing the show anymore? And later, who is Bernice? Is she in the show too? Wonder how many more chairs you can fit over there. Yeah, how many more chairs do we need? <laughs> Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. My daughter said my husband molested her when she was younger. I have never raped my daughter. You know what you did to me. You said you wanted to be here to confront him. I just want the truth to come out. Then start telling the truth. He said at 16, he approached you. Chris had gotten me high. And he said, well, I think it's time that you knew what making love was. Bull. Did you get her high? Yeah, I did. Do you have a problem with lying? I did when I was younger, yes. Chris is facing years in prison. You just not even care. Really? I care about my family. Then why are you doing this to your family? Because I want justice. That's tomorrow.